Show me your hand if this photograph evokes a strong emotional reaction for you. <laughs> Us humans, as primates, we tend to have these strong emotional reactions consistently to serpents. You might be feeling revulsion, a little bit of fear. How about disgust? For this reason, snakes are able to teach us a lot about our emotions. I've even learned three things in particular that snakes have taught me about how to improve my personal relationships in life. I received a dramatic lesson from a venomous snake in the wild when I was just 14 years old. It was the first beautiful spring day and it was warm enough for the snakes to be out. So of course, I went down to the swamp to see what I could find. And I found this little water snake along the trail. So I'm like, yes, the snakes are out. I got down to the water and there's another water snake. It's just about to get away. So of course, what do I do? I grab it and I hold it up all the way to eye level. And I realize it's this snake. It's a cottonmouth water moccasin. Right. There's something you have to understand about cottonmouths. This is not just any other venomous pit viper. This is the most renowned, infamous snake in the eastern United States. If you talk with people around here, you can hear endless stories about how this snake will chase you through the woods. It'll, it'll even drop into your canoe just to bite you. It'll jump out of nowhere. That's the animal I found myself holding with my bare hands, mid-body, and there's something that flashed through my mind. I'm a cellist. I make my money playing cello. If I lose my fingers or even function of my hand, my career is over. And of course, as soon as I recognized it, I dropped it on the ground and it looked up at me. And then it attacked. No. <laughs> it just curled up there and opened its mouth. He's like, you can't mistake me now. I'm a cotton mouth. Now, I like to put myself in the snake's perspective because it turns out that snakes are a lot more fearful of us than we are of them. Imagine yourself this high to the ground and a psychopathic ape comes out of the sky and launches you up into the air. You're, you are just enjoying your waterfront property, minding your own business, and you find yourself in this situation. You would freak out. But this animal did something different. It de-escalated the situation. It wasn't being hurt in that moment, so it just bided its time, and it got caught by the soft leaf litter, and then it just hoped that I wouldn't bother it again. See, de-escalation means being able to feel emotion, but not being controlled by that emotion. This comes pretty easily for snakes, as it turned out, because they're not really emotional animals. But us humans, we have a problem with this. How many times have you felt attacked by somebody verbally, and you came out of the gates defending yourself, and the situation became worse as a result of that emotional reaction. That happens to me all the time. And so I realized, if I conduct these kinds of conflicting, potentially emotional reactions a little bit more like snakes do, I could improve those interactions. I received a second lesson from snakes when I was just 11 years old. I was begging my mom to let me get a pet boa constrictor. And to her everlasting credit, she finally said yes. She's like, this is gonna be an educational opportunity. And so I would go around the neighborhood with my little boa constrictor named Irwin after Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, of course. And the other kids are walking down the street with their dogs. I put this snake on a stick, and I'm walking down the street, the street with my pet snake. Little did I know there's a retired lady down the street named Miss Fox. She told me later she was, she'd been terrified of snakes her entire life. So she'd be looking out of her window like, what is this kid doing? One day I was walking by, and Miss Fox had the courage to come up to me. She said, what is it you have there? Would you introduce me? to your pet boa constrictor. Miss Fox was open enough to discover for the first time in her life that this figment of her nightmares was actually a real live breathing animal that had its own perspective of the world that was just trying to live out its life. And that day changed Miss Fox forever because she loved to garden. She would go out and she'd see a snake and she would run the other way. But after this encounter with the real breathing animal, 
such a beautiful animal that is shiny, and you think it's slimy, but it's actually smooth. She began to appreciate their beauty, and when she saw one, she wasn't going to pick it up like me, but she would be able to observe it calmly. When we remain open to others in spite of our preconceptions, we get to encounter out of curiosity what is actually there and explore new possibilities, new connections with both animals and with people. Now, there was another time I was looking for more cotton mouths. And I don't know why this thicket looked likely to me, but I decided to crawl through this thicket. So I was on my hands and knees, the, the thorns are clawing at my clothing, and the vegetation is obscuring my vision. And suddenly, this was just right in front of me. What is this animal doing? It's a cottonmouth just calmly sitting there with its mouth wide open. It's communicating. It's saying, look, I know you couldn't see me with my fantastic camouflage, but now you can see my bright mouth, so please just go around me and we'll both have a better day. Thank you very much. Now, if this humble animal can use clear, simple communication to solve its own problems in life and avoid conflict, how much more can ourselves as humans use our words to discover other individuals, communicate calmly and clearly, and create some understanding in our lives? What these animals have really been teaching me this whole time is a matter of respect. De-escalation, staying open in spite of preconceptions or prejudgments, and clear, calm communication. We have opportunities to apply these things every day to our lives. Whether it's a family member that you tend to conflict with, there's always that one person, right? Or somebody on the internet or in person who shares a different political view than you might have. And it's so easy, I find, to be dismissive. Oh, I don't think that that's reasonable. But then when I talk with people, I start to understand where they come from because everybody has a reason for the things that they do and the things that they believe, even snakes. I started to apply these principles even back to the snakes themselves. And that's when I discovered what these animals are really like. Ten years ago, I was out filming with some friends in the swamp, making film about reptiles and I spotted another cottonmouth in the distance. I was able to approach it calmly. Rather than grabbing it, trying to catch it, I just approached the animal as if we had even known each other before. And for the first time, I lowered myself down to that creature's perspective. I literally immersed myself in that animal's environment. And this time, there was no reaction. There was no displaying of the cottonmouth, it wasn't even trying to get away. It was this rare moment where two species so often locked in combat, in conflict, were able to simply share space and observe the valid existence of such different creatures. I thought this was extraordinary at the time. I thought, this snake is special. I'll never do this again. But since then, I have had this interaction over and over with many cottonmouths. It turns out that these animals just want to live and let live. The most maligned of venomous snakes is actually a peaceful animal. Now, I'm not telling you to go pick up your local cottonmouth, <laughs> but you will have opportunities every day to apply what these animals teach you. You'll encounter more interactions that are just as surprising and unusual as this one, whether it's with other people, or other animals, creatures that you might have not connected with otherwise. The biggest challenge that we face, in spite of everything going on in the world right now, the biggest challenges are still isolation from one another and demonization of each other. So the next time you do see a snake in your garden or anywhere else, view it as an opportunity to practice feeling your emotion but having the courage to not be controlled by your emotion, to just have respect for the existence of another creature that's so different from yourself. Now, we're not going to see snakes every day. As much as I would love for all of us to see a snake every day, <laughs> that's probably not going to happen. 
and many will be grateful for that. But you will see a person, you will meet a person every day who is different from yourself. And you'll have the opportunity to take a deep breath when you feel emotions arising and you feel the temptation to react and instead de-escalate and stay open to who that person really is in spite of your preconceptions and start a calm and clear communication that develops understanding. When we do that in our lives, we'll find ourselves establishing new connections that we never thought possible and we'll see our relationships and our lives transform and become richer.